A massive thank you to Funny Man, William, Rajesh, Andy and Noah for subscribing to the channel. If you're not featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. We're today we're here back with round 11 of season 3 of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we've sort of reached that weird stage now uh, where My Team and the Williams Road to Glory have caught each other up again. So th there's going to be a little bit of Zanvolt on the channel over the course of this week. Of course, Zanvolt as well. A rather difficult track to race on, on F1 2021. We've, we've spoken about it many, many times in the past. But yeah, the high-level downforce of the AI is going to be a tough one to try and counterbalance uh, this weekend. But if you missed out the last video from the Belgian Grand Prix, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking it out. We now have the fastest car in Formula 1 on paper. Red Bull, McLaren and for, uh, Mercedes as well of course. Obviously still giving us a big big run for our money at the moment. Safe to say it hasn't been a plain sailing season so far but still looking towards the future. Maybe the second half of this campaign we can really try and bring something together as the season goes on. Championship wise Hamilton still leads the way. Three points ahead of Lando Norris a further 20 ahead of Daniel Ricciardo and then you've got Sonoda and both of the Ferraris there. We're still trying to hang on to Red Bull's coattails at the moment but we desperately Really need Jensen to try and get a bit more luck in as well here. But yeah, fingers crossed this weekend. We can have a good race out here at the Dutch Grand Prix. Zandvoort is a fun track, but a difficult one. Let's dive into it. Right, well, here we are then. Free practice at the Dutch Grand Prix. We're only going to do the fuel wear run for... Or fuel wear? The fuel um, simulation run, even, I should say, this weekend. Uh, but yeah, we'll wait and see as to how things go, obviously. Zandvoort are not going to be taking the high line like they tend to in real life. Formula 1 just doesn't work on the games there. But fingers crossed this weekend can go our way. Obviously still having to sort of tweak around the AI levels, everything like that at the moment. The performance patch does seem to have made it a bit better. He says as he loses four tenths through, through that corner. But yeah, fingers crossed. It's going to be mighty close at the end of our second run there. But we just about get the green score with a tenth to spare. Lap, but you're capable of more if you work at it. Oh, don't give me those sorts of comments, Jeff. I'm I'm pretty happy with settling for the bare minimum this weekend. Let's let's get into qualifying. To those of you that moan when I don't use a set of medium tyres at the start of qualifying, I see you, I understand the hate sometimes. I mean, it's a little bit extreme, but hey-ho. Let's see what we can muster up then on a set of mediums at the start of Q1. Maybe it'll be enough to get us through into Q2 this weekend, but we'll wait and see. Qualifying has still been so inconsistent this season. Just the pace of the AI is so up and down over the course of the year. As we head through the banking, so far so good. Perez on a 107.8, Charlotte Lowe is on a 108.1, so yeah, we probably need to be in the 8s. Coming out of the final corner and to finish off our first run in Q1. No dramatics through the banking. Down towards the line, it's going to be a 109.1. Puts us between Mazepin and Bottas there. It might be good enough for Q2, but probably not worth the risk. Right, heading back out though, right towards the end of Q1. We've still got a little bit of time left on the clock in case we do make an error here, but fingers crossed as we actually nudge the wall with a rear tyre that time round. Yeah, fingers crossed now. We can try and move ourselves safely back up the order. We're only a tenth ahead of the Williams, which obviously on harder tyres isn't too bad, but very much expecting them to improve late on in this session. So with some quicker rubber, we should be able to find a lot of time here. Verstappen currently we fastest on a 107. So, yeah, we're about one and a half seconds away from ultimate pace, but qualifying is never this car's strong point. Running right in the final corner, then. It's going to be about a half a second improvement here. Should put us safe. But, yeah, certainly not as much time as I would have liked to have found there. A 100... Oh, only, yeah, 1086 in the end. Only leaves us 13th. But felt like I left a bit of time on the table, but that should be good enough for Q2. He says with confidence, we don't have time for another run, so it's going to have to be. Only just at the end of Q1 there. You can see Ocon and George Russell tied just in front of us, but four hundredths of a second clear of Valtteri Bottas at the end of Q1. That was certainly not as comfortable as I would have liked it to be. There, Jensen Button down on a 107.4 as Lando into the 106s at the end of Q1 there. McLaren have got a lot of pace. Let's get into Q2. My first run then of Q2. We really need to be trying to look towards Q3 here, but it's going to be very, very difficult to do so. I have to leave nothing on the table 
in these runs and definitely need to be down in the sevens. A couple of small mistakes as we head through sector two there, but a lot of curb as we head through the stadium style section here of sector three. I'm sure we could see some orange flares at the end of this Grand Prix, but out in towards the final corner of our first Q2 lap there. Back end again tries to get away. Then we nudge the wall out of the final corner. That's going to scrub off a bit of momentum. And it's another 1086 at the end of the first run there. But a big old mistake at the end of the lap. Definitely feel like we can get close to the 10, uh, 107s, yeah. All right, getting ready to start our second lap then. We've certainly left it tight at the end of qualifying as we head out of the final corner. We should just about have enough time left on the clock though as we cross the line there. Two, three seconds left on the clock but what can we do on this second q2 run there try not to nudge the curb on the inside of turn one there that will pretty much automatically spin the car we chuck it down in towards turn two and turn three a right, short shift on the way out there nice straight run on the x there does allow us to get the power a little bit earlier someone has gone purple didn't quite catch who that was as we head back up the hill in towards sector two down a couple of gears gets close to that inside okay, curb as you dare they're back and again so. We trying need to, to snap out on us. Oh, a little bit out of shape there. A lot of curb again through sector two. But so far, this lap is still in the green, but you can see the AI swarming around us at this stage of the lap. We're only a tenth up at the moment. We need to find a lot of time in sector three if we want to try and move ourselves anywhere up the order. Let's be really just trying to get it over the curb in Lance Stroll again. Another man who's not particularly good in qualifying runs. Two tenths up now. As we head through the final corners of the lap, yellow flags out, no idea who's had issues, but it is behind us if I'm not mistaken. Then we're going to be three tenths up, might be about four tenths up as we cross the line, but only P12. And that was pretty much everything I could get out of the car without risking binning it again like we did in Belgium. Well, P12 at the end of qualifying is certainly not the end of the world. They're a thousandth of a second behind George Russell, and we could have been up into P11 for the Dutch Grand Prix there, but Lando Norris again fastest at the end of Q2 ahead of homeboy Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton there. Four cars from four different teams inside the top four. JB makes it through, no one made it through on the mediums though, so maybe an alternate strategy could work wonders here today. Let's dive in to the Dutch Grand Prix. For years, the passionate Dutch fans have been easy to find trackside at races across Europe and throughout the world. Now at long last, they have a Grand Prix to call their own. It's a warm welcome once again to all of our viewers in the Netherlands and around the globe as we get underway for the Dutch Grand Prix. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left. The main straight is 678 meters long and heads into turn one, the Tarzan corner. With DRS down the main straight into the braking zone, that could be the best overtaking opportunity on the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the run down into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle. And the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Norris, Daniel Ricciardo, and Verstappen. Button, Perez. Gasly, and Yuki Tsunoda. Russell, Mr. Monaco, and Guan Yu Zhou, and Mazepin. Ocon, Stroll, Valtteri Bottas, and Nicholas Latifi. Lundgaard, Giovinazzi, Schwartzman, and Mick Schumacher. And now, it's time to head down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Right, well, rather surprisingly then, no grid penalties here for the Dutch Grand Prix, round 11 of the campaign. But we're going to try, we're going to try and do a medium soft strategy here today. I feel like I tried it last season and it 
almost worked, if I remember correctly. But I can't remember off the top of my head. Obviously, tyre grip's so important around this track. But I think it's going to be interesting to see what the top runners do. Obviously, starting on their soft compounded tyres here. I think George Russell is likely to be starting on the hards, though. But yeah, let's dive in, then. Round 11 of the year here from Circuit Park Zandvoort. Five red lights. And it's going to be lights out. And away we go. Not up to the best start in the world there. It's everyone and fans out there. Verstappen almost in the wall as we head down towards Town 1 there. We're going to have a look straight at the inside of George Russell there. As I think Guan Yu Zhou's gone around the outside. So Russell getting sandwiched through the first couple of turns in this Grand Prix. We're going to do our best Fernando Alonso impression there. Around the outside of Sergio Perez and Sonoda there. As we head out of Turn 3. Almost got a run on Pierre Gasly. As we head up the hill there. But straight up into ninth place in this Dutch Grand Prix there. And that has been the perfect little start to this race there. Gasly all over the curbing through Sector 2 there. Clearly very, very brave and committed in his Alpha Tauri off the start of this race. But yeah, perfect little start for ourselves as we now head through the twisty bits of Sector 2 here. So, so difficult to work out what the front end is doing. Really need a compliant car to get through that middle sector effectively there. But yeah, dream little start for us. Does look like it is still Lewis Hamilton who leads the way as we head out of Sector 2 and in towards the final sector of the opening lap there. And Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz right behind him. So Ferrari looking good this weekend as well around a track with some higher downforce. So always seems to do a bit better around these sorts of circuits there. As Hamilton, yeah, new fast slap of the Grand Prix, of course, at the end of lap 1 now. here. Keep it up. But we are still all over the back of Pierre Gasly at the end of the first lap there. So yeah, the dream start for us in this Grand Prix. Can we try and make anything work through the banking this time round? We're again going to try and have a look around the outside of another car there. Gasly, though, goes defensive on the exit. We just about do the up and under on him as it's going to be side by side as we head up the hill there. Gasly, though, still has the inside. Oh, a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. Gasly willing to give us nothing on the exit of the corner there and the Frenchman holds on to the position for now. But all this battling with Sergio, uh, with Sergio Perez, sorry, with Pierre Gasly early on in this Grand Prix has meant that he has no DRS on the guys in front here. So we might be able to stick close to the rear of the Alpha Tauri early on in this Grand Prix. But we've got to be really careful as well, of course. We are on a very aggressive tyre strategy as well over the course of this race. So yeah, we don't want to sit too much in the dirty air. But we don't want to let Pierre Gasly romp away in this race. We'll have to see what the AI are doing. I'm inclined to believe they'll probably be doing a soft hard strategy here. We've really got to hope that Pierre tyres start to hit the cliff over the next couple of laps. They certainly haven't through there just yet. Look at that. Half a second. Nothing we can do. Oh, I pray. I pray this finally gets sorted out at some point, F1. I'm genuinely considering at some point, once we've won a title, just sort of restarting my team. Because it seems to be as you get further through the series, the AI just get more and more OP. But we, it's definitely not going to be this year we win a title. So we've got at least one more season of this fun unless it gets patched out. Well, I think Pierre's soft tyres are starting to go off just a little bit more in this Grand Prix. Either that or he's getting a couple of small issues in that Alpha Tauri. Because we are definitely closer to him than we have been over the last few laps. As we head out of the final corner, just try and keep the back end in check. A little bit of a wobble there as you can see. But activating the ERS and the DRS as we head back down towards Turn 1. Not quite going to be close enough for a send there as we just, only just, nick a wheel on the grass through the first corner. But now all over the back of Pierre Gasly once more in this race. Can we try and get a run out of Turn 3? No, not this time around. They just couldn't quite have the bravery on the throttle. But still, yeah, we are definitely getting a bit closer again there as you can see up in towards Turn 4. And we'll see you again at the end of the lap, Pierre. All right, come on then, Pierre Gasly. I think this is around the time the AI do start to pit in this Grand Prix. Again, just sort of half throttling through the final corner there. Gasly is into the pits. Sonoda stays out behind us, though JB stays out as well. But the team is still recommending that we come in on to a set of uh, medium... Uh, sorry, hard tyres even, I should say, for the second stint in this race. But, yeah, these mediums not feeling particularly brilliant at the moment but now we've got some clear air in front hopefully we can try and keep them in good shape still really i think we'd probably have to take to about lap 22 if we want any chance of going soft to the end so only halfway through this stint and these tires aren't in great nick jensen into the wall at the end the of pit. lap jensen 12 it looks like yeah everyone else is going on to a set of the hard compound tires for the second half of this race but 
we are going to be up into the lead at some point once Carlos Sainz does pit. So maybe a well-timed safety car could really come in clutch for us in this race. Reliability is often a good test here at Zanvolt. Obviously in real life, no real errors, never mind retirements. There we go, Sainz into the pits at the end of lap 13. So yeah, I think if we want to make the softs work, we need to get to about lap 22. But Hamilton now is going to be behind us trying to close in the gap on his hards. But if we can make it to that point in the Grand Prix, we are going to be so much faster than a lot of the field there as Ricardo is on another set of softs. So Ricardo's two stopping this then. And that's rather interesting to see. The car behind has started to drop back. There's a gap beginning to form. So I've just noticed as well, Carlos Sainz has actually pit from the lead and come back out in the net lead of the Grand Prix. So clearly in all of that, he's got round Lewis Hamilton there. So important for Ferrari, who could be on for another win with Carlos Sainz. He's completely overshadowed Charles Leclerc in this series, and he might do it again today. And just to go show how weird this race is on these We're mediums. The window. You'll be on, the hard. on these mediums, yeah, we're barely losing any time to Carlos Sainz now. So clearly getting into a groove without the dirty air again. These mediums starting to come back into their own once more. Oh, we got yellow flags out. Someone's had issues with one of the Williams. Who do we see a safety car now? In this Dutch Grand Prix. No, it looks like he's been able to keep it going. That's rather disappointing. I'm guessing he's just looped it round by himself. But we're really done with the safety car here. This lap. Give us the best in lap you can. Yeah, if we got a safety car there, that could have pretty much bunched us up right to the lead of this Grand Prix. But still hitting good laps at the moment. We've got Mick Schumacher now just in front of us, though. So hopefully he'll get out of the way in a moment. But yeah, to be honest, now suddenly getting these tyres to the end of lap 24 doesn't seem like that impossible of a task. Oh, we've got an engine warning light just come on as we tick over onto lap 20. Not too sure which component that is, but as it's just come on, fingers crossed it won't give us too many issues. Schwartzman jumps out of the way as well. But another two laps on these tyres, they are yeah, definitely hitting the cliff now. You can see we're starting to hemorrhage a bit of time to Carlos Sainz behind. As long as we can keep him at bay by the time we pit, that should still be okay. The car behind's tyres are in much better condition than yours. We'll keep an eye on the times. I think... Keep an eye on the times, Jeff. We all know what's happening. He's absolutely closing up to me. And it looks like Ricardo's boxed it in again in this race. On track, resulting in loose debris. Fortunately, the marshals have managed to clear it up in time, and there are no plans for a safety car right now. Not too sure what that's all about. We can see just how sketchy this thing's becoming, even through the simple S's there. It's all over the road. We've got to try and get these tyres about another three miles, and then we can box. So we've got yellow flags out. Don't say it's JV going slowly again. I think they've gone away once more. Well, I cannot wait to get off these tyres at the end of this lap. this lap. Then come into the pits at the end of this lap. Carlos signs all over the back of me as well here as we close up towards the back of Nicholas Latifi in the scrum freebie. Yeah, this rubber is all but gone. Certainly don't think you can sell these tyres much second hand, I'll be honest with you guys. But at the final corner, let's just not bin it. The final time round there, Latifi is going to box into the pits as well there, so fingers crossed the Canadian doesn't slow us up at all. As we slow down into the pit lane, luckily I've set the front wing damage to no. Not too sure if we had a tiny bit of front wing damage, but it certainly wasn't costing us much. Yeah, these tyres absolutely shot there, as that is the tightest pit lane navigation I've ever seen. Come on, go! Have I got all day? Where are we going to re-emerge, though, in this race? It's going to be close to us and Sonoda still in this Grand Prix, so clearly the mediums haven't worked out too badly. we got a warning crossing the pit exit line, but not going to worry too much about that. It's right behind the young Japanese driver as we exit out the pit lane. We've got blue flags to deal with as well. They're three wide on the exit the corner, and Sonoda left with nowhere to go on the exit there. Schumacher rather wisely jumps out of the way as well. strategy option. Why are the team recommending another new strat? They reckon confirmed. mediums again? Not too sure what that's all about, but... Yeah, heading back out of the pit lane. They're a cheeky little move on Yuki Tsunoda. We do hold on to P8 here. Obviously, Ricardo even further back now. He's got yellow flags out. It's one of the Aston Martins who might just be retiring from the Grand Prix. So if we get a safety car... ...of an incident which has resulted in lots of loose debris on the track, the safety car is being deployed. Is that going to give all the top runners a free pit stop here, or are they all going to stay out? It looks like they're staying out there, which works beautifully for us, because okay, we're not going to get a bunched up field on fresh negative, rubber. Which means you are too fast. Reduce your pace. This has the potential to work beautifully for us, but we need Schwartzman to get out of the way. Our former teammate, 
yeah, I'm hoping, hoping we're still on his Christmas card list, I think, today. This safety car has been such a blessing for us late on in this Dutch Grand Prix. Now we're going to have a much fresher set of soft tyres against a lot of hard runners late on here. But can we get a run on Schwartzman straight off the line? There we go. Schwartzman peels straight out of the way there. Thank you very much to our former teammate. But surely we're going to have so much more grip than the rest of the field there. Sonoda try to have a look back up the inside through Turn 1 there as we actually get a little bit wide. Got to try and get these rubber up to temperature here. But can we try and make a move work on Pierre Gazza? We've got yellow flags out. So that's one of the Alfa Romeos that's pulled off now. So Giovinazzi out of this Grand Prix as well. So that's been another engine failure then off the restart. So George Russell and Antonio Giovinazzi not having the day they would have wanted. Fortunately, the marshals have managed to clear it up in time and there are no plans for a safety car right now. But really, really struggling off this restart lap when we've got to try and utilise this soft rubber. We're just losing a bit of ground to Pierre. Of course, the AI always switch on their rubber incredibly quickly on F1 2021. As again, we get a bit of a wobble out of the final corner, but nine laps to go of this Dutch Grand Prix. And surely now we're going to be close enough to Pierre Gasly the with the tyre advantage. A gap form. Just skimming the curb through turn one there. That's about as much of that as I want to take, but down in towards turn three. Can we have a look around the outside there? Massively late on the brakes. Can we get the run on Pierre Gasly on the exit of the corner there? It is going to be a drag race between myself and the Alpha Tauri. We get ourselves around the outside. But it's going to have to be a late, late block. No, Gasly again. Not willing to give an inch there on the exit of the corner. And clearly he wants this seventh place. And just like early on, Gasly not wanting to back out of it. But fair play to him. This has been a brilliant fight that has gone on all day. So we again get a bit out of shape here. But again, that battling means he won't have any DRS on Jensen up the road. I think Gasly, though, might have just got a tiny bit of front wing damage from that contact there, or if anything, he's struggling a little bit more on his hard compound tyres there. We get all loose, though, out of the final corner as we try again to get a run back down towards turn one on the Alpha Tauri. DRS enabled. DRS. DRS is now online. Still just struggling a little bit for confidence on this set of soft compound tyres. Can we do it again on Gasly though? No, way out of shape on the way in. So now we're going to have to wait for the DRS here and pray then we can get a run. I do not want to finish this race behind Pierre Gasly. We have spent so long looking at the Honda logos. I do not want to finish behind him. More yellow flags out. There's one of the Haskars now falling to the wayside in this race. I think that is Robert Schwartzman out of the Grand Prix. Actually, said that might be Mick Schumacher. No, he's just made a mistake by himself. Very, very weird. But Gasly... Driving like a man possessed in the final few laps of this Grand Prix. And I'm wondering now whether actually we were the ones that picked up just a little bit of front wing damage in that close battle. Because now we've got nothing against him. And I feel like we're still pushing to the limit. Yeah, I've just had a quick look on the mini-map. And you guys might just be able to see there's a slightly different shade of green. If I'm not mistaken, between the left and the right front wing. So, yeah, that might be what's costing us late on here at Zandvoort. We're losing so much time to Pierre Gasly through Sector 2. And, of course, it's on the side of the wing through all the high downforce corners as well. There. So, with four to go, I think we're just going to have to try and hold off ahead of Sergio Perez now in this race. No idea what's happened to Sonoda. I think, is he pit? No, he's just dropping back. He's outside the points here, whilst Hamilton still battling for the win. The more I look at it, the more I'm convinced that Pierre Gasly has just become possessed or something in this race. Because he's actually taking time out of our teammate Jensen Button late on in this race there. The gap to Button up to 4.2. We've got more yellow flags though. So I think that might be Sonoda. Now with issues in this Grand Prix, they're trying to look who it was. We almost drop it ourselves as we head back down. But no, it's Mazepin out of the Dutch Grand Prix there. And he's made it so far in to retire. Now Sonoda's out as well. So two more cars out of this race. What's going on? Like two laps to go now. We've got Daniel Ricciardo on mediums. No idea what's gone on in this race there, but Mazepin, or well, someone's clearly lost some bodywork down towards turn one. Seems like a very old place to have an issue. I think Sonoda, yeah, has just had an engine failure, so my okay, guess is clear. Mazepin ran into him. But yeah, we've now got Daniel Ricciardo all over the back of us. With just two laps to go of this Grand Prix. So we are having to make this the widest 2 and 2 motorsport car the world has ever seen. And it's through corners like this where we've really got to be careful. Though. We've just got to sit on the racing line. So no matter how much extra speed Ricardo can carry, he just can't do anything. 
Ricardo's going to get a run on us onto the final lap of this Dutch Grand Prix. We've got to make sure we don't hit that wheel. So we head back down towards Turn 1 there, but Ricardo trying to look around the outside, and we have definitely got front wing damage in this Grand Prix. There, Perez is going to be able to capitalise on that and move back past the Australians. We are just all over the road at this late stage of the Grand Prix there. Can Checo now get a run on us as we head on through this final lap there? It does look like it is going to be Carlos Sainz who's going to take home a well-earned race victory at the end of this one. Make sure we sit on the racing line there. Felt like we were under steering a bit. Just had to slow it down. No, Perez is going to be able to get a run to the inside there. Back up the inside we go, though, through the next corner. Very, very aggressive move between myself and Sergio Perez. But Gasly battling hard with us is certainly giving us the fighting spirit we need late on in this Dutch Grand Prix there. We've even got his teammate, Guan Yu Zhou, Trying to get back involved in this battle there. But it has been a nightmare race for Daniel Ricciardo. He's going to lose further ground in the Drivers' World Championship there. Hamilton, new fast lap of the day with his P2 there. So he's going to further extend his lead in the World Drivers' Championship there. But through the final corner, 12th to 8th in the end here is Anvil. Should have been more, but happy to have the points. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Ferme. Many doubted whether they could pull off the win here at Zandvoort, but they have done, and done it in spectacular style. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr Monaco. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. No change in the top spot, but with today's points, their hold on the lead is getting weaker. Meanwhile, Alpha Tori's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Well, I want whatever Pierre Gasly snorted before the start of the Grand Prix there. He was driving like a man possessed throughout most of that, and yeah, not willing to budge at all. On that P7 there. On the one hand, I'm a bit gutted we got the front wing damage because I genuinely felt like we had a bit more in the car. But racing's racing at the end of the day. And Pierre Gasly was on the inside. We tried to give him a squeeze, but he was never willing to back out in that situation there. But it is Carlos Sainz yet another race victory for Ferrari there. Looked like he pretty much dominated after the pit stop window there. Got the undercut on Hamilton and never really seemed under too much pressure between then and the end of the race there, despite the safety car restart. Hamilton P2 ahead of Lando Norris, so does pull out four points in the Drivers' World Championship there. Charles Leclerc, Verstappen, the homeboy in P5 ahead of our teammate Button there. Gasly in a 2-2 two -two motorsport sandwich, and then Perez and Ricardo round out your top 10. Mean that Red Bull don't pull out any more points ahead of us. At this stage of the year there. You can see the first of your finishers. Uh, we got Latifi, Schumacher and Schwartzman a lap down there. Sonoda, Maus, Fingio and Russell all not making it through to the checkered flag. But championship wise, Sainz gets the jump on both Sonoda and his teammate Charles Leclerc there. To move up into P4 as one of, in my personal opinion, one of the best drivers so far we've seen of this season. Gasly's big result means he's now ahead of Bottas and Esteban Ocon in the Drivers' World Championship. As Wilder and constructors wise, Alpha Tari jump Williams as Wilder and could quite possibly get Alpine and Aston by the end of the year as well. There, McLaren still lead Mercedes by 30 points though at the top of the table. Ferrari into no man's land as well as we try to close up the gap to Red Bull. But thank you all 
so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with more F1 2021 My Team. We'll head to the Temple of Speed next. We'll be ready for Monster. You guys do not want to miss it. A massive thank you for the continued support from all our channel members. If you want to be featured in these end clips, make sure you click the join button down below. But yeah, once again, a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, F. Staphios, Kato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, and Mighty Spork for becoming channel members. Their support is really, really appreciated.